Not that I didn't believe, I was always kind of confused on just uh, religion and like I never said I didn't believe in God, but I also, it was like an internal war, I always say, like I felt like I had. I think it was just knowing, uh, you know, I could be open and vulnerable and there was mm. no judgment there. Um, and sometimes even still, I feel like, you know, I'm not knowledgeable enough or well-versed enough and to like speak up, but that's never how, you know, I felt. And you mm -hmm. just learn, you know, so much mm -hmm. from others and be encouraged and supported. And This is NCC Unplugged. Welcome back to another episode of NCC Unplugged. This is a place where we love having conversations and we're going to have another conversation today. And this is really an interview to kick off a series of interviews and something that we hope to do a lot more of on this podcast. And that's just sit down with uh, one of our church members and talk about their testimony, talk about their life story, talk about things they're involved in here at the church and just their excitement about uh, how God has worked in their lives. And so I am excited to introduce you all to Haley McDaniel. Hey guys, I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Uh, so Haley, uh, I think I've first got to know you probably when our families were in a small group together mm -hmm. um, and got to hear a little bit about her life story and then kind of get involved in, you know, some some things with, with her life and her sister and she'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but Haley, tell us... Tell us what it was like growing up. Did you grow up in Pennsylvania? I grew up in Pennsylvania, yep. Um, Bethel Park, so in the South Hills. Okay, very cool. I always say there's no like good way to get to the South Hills from here when you go home to visit. But um, did, you, did you grow up in the church? I did not. So okay. we went, my background's like a Catholic. We would go to a Catholic church for mm -hmm. like Easter and Christmas, mm -hmm. but um, no, I didn't. We didn't like. Yeah, so, I mean that, that's probably a typical story. Mm -hmm. you, you've probably met others at Norman that are like that. Yeah. Uh, what was what was family like back then? You have brothers, sisters. Yeah, I have three older sisters, so I'm the youngest. Um, my oldest is nine years ahead of me, and then oh. my sister uh, Chelsea. She's two years, and Katie's a little older than her. Okay, I'm the youngest in my family too. So yeah, a little connection there. That's good. <laughs> Uh, so you grew up in the area, went to high school, you go to college somewhere? Yep. I went to Cal U, um, for business management for my first two years. And then I transferred to Point Park and finished out Okay, my bachelor's there. You are married. Yes. When, when did you meet Bruce? Yeah, at Cal U. Okay. I say that's the only reason I went to Cal U because I was meant <laughs> to meet him because <laughs> he graduated and then I transferred. Okay. Very cool. But, uh, yeah. So how long have you guys been married? We'll be this November. Will be six years, but we've been together for like twelve. Yeah. So. And children? Yeah, I have a four-year-old son, Wade. Uh, my daughter Mabel is going to be two in August, and then we're expecting our third, a girl, in July. Excellent. Yeah. Excited about that. Yeah, we're excited. So very cool. Uh, you are a stay-at-home mom currently. Yep. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. And Bruce uh, works where. He works for the Union Railroad. Very cool. Yep. So um, when did you start coming to NCC? You remember the year? I think 2017 because we were engaged and we were looking to find a home church. Cool. So talk about that a little bit as far as like, because I, I think I've met with other couples that like are engaged mm -hmm. or newly married and they're like, I think it's time to get back to church or one spouse influences the other. Mm -hmm. What was it like for you and what were some of your feelings around church during uh, that time? Yes. <laughs> um, definitely Bruce. I mean, him and his family were like a big part of um, my faith, but wanting to get involved in church and find a home church when we were engaged. Um, my, my only like background would have been, his hope church where mm. like I really got exposed to going to church on Sundays and um, he lives in like a small <laughs> little uh, country town up North. So their church was like much smaller than what's all typically around here. But mm -hmm. NCC was like a really great mix of what he grew up, you know, experiencing, but also just a little bigger. Mm -hmm. So it was a really good mix between like what we were both looking for and, um, but so I was nervous because I just, he works crazy hours. So a lot of the times I was coming by myself and that took mm. a lot of courage. Like yeah, when you're sure. new to your faith to come and 
you know, find where do I sit or who mm-hmm. do I talk to? But everyone mm-hmm. was so welcoming and it was always just such an amazing experience. And I remember um, just saying it felt like home. So cool. I knew we found the right church. Did you guys feel at that time it was like, this is the start of our life together and we're making part of that Yeah, here at NCC? Definitely. We wanted to like have that foundation because mm-hmm. we were coming together, you know, in marriage and wanted to be rooted in a church and know like we're going to be raising a family that we want also coming in. Yeah. So you said he was a big influence. Did he grow up in the church, Catholic mm-hmm. church? Um, he, not Catholic, but yeah, he grew up in the church, Mm -hmm. um, just like a non-denominational, like first church of God, Mm -hmm. um, in like New Bethlehem. I don't know if you're familiar with that area, but yeah, that's cool. So what are some of the things that you, you guys started rooting yourself in at Norman once you came? I feel like it, it took a little bit to get. You know, just because he does work weird hours that mm-hmm. he feels bad committing, you know, to mm. to certain things because he knows he's not always going to be able to to be there um, every single time to serve or mm-hmm. go to small groups or whatnot. But um, Allison Murray reached out. She, I was like, it was on my heart. I started hearing about small groups and then I was just really nervous to like get involved, you know, by myself um, in that. And she sent me a text and introduced herself and... I said, yeah, but I was like, I remember asking, is it okay? Because we were due with Wade, and I was like, mm-hmm. is it okay that I uh, am I, I'm going to be having a baby next month? Should I wait till, <laughs> looking back, I'm like, that's such yeah. a silly question. <laughs> no, but, but uh, when you don't know, you ask those questions, yeah. so that's good. So, yeah, we just jumped in, and Bruce came whenever, you know, he was able to mm-hmm. with work, and it was great. That's where we met you and yeah. Austin and the kids. Yeah, so thinking about that, I mean, that was probably several years we were in that group together. Mm-hmm. You guys went through a lot of stuff as you were starting your family. What are what are some of the things when you think of uh, like a small group, a community group where you are going through seasons of life with people that really helped you in your faith? Mm-hmm. Like what 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 is it in that group that allowed you to grow into who you are now? I think it was just knowing, you know, I could be open and vulnerable and there was Mm. no judgment there. Um, And I always, and sometimes even still, I feel like, you know, I'm not knowledgeable enough or well-versed enough and to like speak up, but that's never how, you know, I felt. And you Mm -hmm. just learn, you know, so much Mm -hmm. from others and be encouraged and supported. And I found myself being the chatty one a lot of the time. (laughs) So I guess it all, I don't know, it helped me grow just being encouraged by other members and wanting to dig in more to the word and mm-hmm. be open. Yeah. It's interesting. Cause that, that group for a little bit had different, uh, ages mm-hmm. and people of different seasons of life. And I'm now realizing, you know, my children are getting older. And so now I'm the one speaking into the life of people that have younger kids and, uh, just maybe I've, I guess I've realized that about myself recently and, and, and that there's a lot of ways I'm still learning how to be a, a dad and a father and a husband, uh, but now to have other people in a small group that are just starting that can be unique. And I think we had some of those people in that group that were older in life and had been through some things. Mm-hmm. And uh, so being vulnerable, I like that you said that. I think that's important in, in groups like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, do you think... Do you think that had a an a impact on what your I don't know main ministry is here at the church, which is now MOPS? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think um, you know being involved in small groups and having you know mentors, and since then I've been in other you know mm-hmm. small groups like the discipleship one and the Mama Bear one. So just being surrounded by um, others, I think that. It helped encourage me to to want to do that for others as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. So for those that don't know what MOPS mean, it's an mm-hmm. acronym for Mothers of Preschoolers. Mm-hmm. I've never been to the group. Mm-hmm. I don't qualify. <laughs> uh, but you came on. A, it's been meeting for two years now. Yep. We, um, last year, like yeah, Claire started it the one year, and then I picked up this okay. past year. Um, and they're at, they just rebranded to the mom co. So now we'll have to like learn that phrase. But yeah, so it was mothers of preschoolers and um, it's a international mm-hmm. um, 
ministry, you know, nonprofit organization that is just reaching out and doing wonderful things for, you know, moms of all ages and, you know, single moms, mm-hmm. teen moms. So moms. when you say mops rebranded, like Mops International rebranded? Yeah, so, yeah. They oh, re- wow, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, so it's the Mom Co. now, and it's trying to be more inclusive, so it's not just moms of preschoolers. Okay. Um, I guess I still don't qualify, but okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's amazing how they reach everyone around the globe, and yeah. just to be a part of that is pretty awesome. Yeah, so we host the group. It was on Thursday mornings, mm-hmm. and you guys open up the church to anybody that's in that season of life to say, hey, we understand there's a lot of extra stressors. There's a lot of learning to be done. There's a lot of just unique circumstances that mothers of preschoolers can be having. And so you guys, um, from what I understand, outside perspective, right? I'd see you guys making things. I'd see Mm -hmm. you supporting others' moms. I'd see uh, other volunteers throughout the building watching kids. Um, They're doing activities with the kids while the Mm -hmm. moms met. Um, And so it was just neat to see you know, I wasn't part of it, but it's neat to see, hey, this group needs each other. And that's what you guys are doing for each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think uh, there's such a cool. need. I mean, not, you know, I didn't know until becoming a mother myself, but it can feel so like isolating sometimes, even mm. though you're not the only one going through it. But mm-hmm. like you feel that way or you're telling yourself you are. So I just have such a heart for for moms because I know like where I'm struggling in motherhood. And mm-hmm. um, I think we all have seasons that we're going through, but yeah, so it's we have just amazing uh, volunteers who do help with like child care. That's such yeah. a blessing, and it's a time for us to uh, to be together and mm-hmm. um, to support one another. Yeah, we do fun like crafts and service projects for you know the community, and mm-hmm. they do different outreaches. And yeah, I remember something my wife used to always say is just having adult conversations because yes. <laughs> <laughs> you are talking and going a lot, but it's typically to these young little kids and it's a, yeah, having adult conversations that that are meaningful with others is important. Yes. Um, so how, so how is that? So now like you're a part of a community group, small group, how has leading, uh, changed you or how has it challenged you in your faith or has it? Yeah, I would say it's, Challenge me. It's definitely grown me in my faith, but t- challenging too, because mm-hmm. I don't, you know, sometimes when you're leading, you're not getting filled up on, you know, the word or the thing, you know, the less, because you're so focused on like making sure everything's run right. So it was mm-hmm. just balancing that out and still reaching out for support for myself, even, mm-hmm. you know, while in a leadership role. But I don't know. Yeah. It drew me closer to God and just let him lead and mm-hmm. Remind myself, you know, this isn't about me. It's about mm-hmm. um, God and these other women. Yeah. And, and that growth and seeing the, some of those things, where do you think God has grown you the most? Like if you if you could look back on when you guys first started coming and you guys start saying, okay, we're going to take this serious. This is where we're going to start our life together. Where is there an area in your life where you go, wow, looking back, I used to not be a patient person or I used to not be loving in this way or like, is there, or self-disciplined, is there a way that, or an area of your life where you go, wow, God has really grown me in this? Mm -hmm. I would say, um, it's a hard, I feel like the one, I feel like he's growing in it, but I'm so like critical of it Mm -hmm. still that I'm like, I still think I have more room to grow, but definitely in, um, like grace for myself, which is a mm-hmm. hard one still, like I still struggle with, but I know like I've from where I was to where I am now, it's mm-hmm. pretty amazing to see just that. And then um, like patience, my temper <laughs> with motherhood's brought out my uh, impatience and temper more than I ever thought I had. So it's like I've grown in it, but I'm also yeah. aware, you know, I want to keep yeah. like let the control, I guess. And it covers all of that. Like letting go of control and just letting him lead, mm-hmm. which is hard. There's a saying I always have to repeat to myself. We're our own worst critic. Yes. <laughs> Do you find that true about yourself? <laughs> Very much so, yeah. Just when you said showing myself grace, I <laughs> yeah. just thought about that. Because I think, I think because we, 
you maybe you you are growing in that certain area. It's like it's highlighted for you. Mm-hmm. So because it's highlighted, you're thinking about it more, and you're when you read a scripture, you're like, oh yeah, but this area of my life because you're thinking about it. Right. Um, it's kind of like those itches we tell our kids to stop itching because it's just going to make it worse. Mm-hmm. And you're like, it's just highlighted, so it's more red than other areas of our life. Yeah, I agree. Um, but so I, I always remind myself with that same statement of we're our, our own worst critic. Mm-hmm. And so to have grace with ourselves is important. Yeah. Getting back to your family, you talked about them a little bit and your sisters. Um, I had the privilege of baptizing one of your sisters yes. and getting to know her a little bit. Yeah. So tell us about that process. Like how, so that goes back a few years ago now. Mm-hmm. Um, you shared your faith with her. Mm-hmm. You were kind of coaching her along through different things. What what was that like? How did that happen? Just that, like being a witness for what Jesus did in my life, really. Like mm-hmm. looking back, I don't feel like I did like anything. Like I didn't, like, you know, Chelsea, you need to go to God or pray or do this. Like I just, she mentioned to me that she saw a change like in me after I've, you know, um, accepted Jesus as my savior. Yeah, that and, is awesome. Um, so it was really her reaching out to me. Like I always wondered like, how do, am I reaching people? Am I doing like, should I be saying more? Or, mm-hmm. I'm doing more, but I think just living our lives and people see that, that change. I saw it in Bruce and his family. Like, what is like, they all have something that I'm missing, like this peace. And what is mm-hmm. that? And, um, you know, it was Jesus. So Haley, when you say your sister saw change in you from before to after, what do you think it is that she saw in you that really changed from, you know, before you became a Christian to after you became a Christian? Mm -hmm. I would say I think just, I mean, like everything really, um, just like she's mentioned there was like a piece about me, you know, I was more Mm. just felt like calm and um, just like my presence to her, which, you know, to me, I think is obviously Jesus and the Holy Spirit that she is seeing. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm guessing you weren't like this wild child, right? Before. No, I mean, looking back, I can see, um, just like, I can see that I was lost and it wasn't in like some extreme, like, you you know, I Mm -hmm. was a wild child or anything, but, um, just after I met Bruce and then, meeting his family and, um, you know, going to church with them. And I remember them asking, you know, you know, what church do you go to? And I was always so just like nervous, like, Mm. you know, they're going to cast me off or cause you know, I pray, you know, we pray over our children now for their future spouses and, um, for them to not just judge me immediately when I said, you know, I don't go to church, Mm. you know, I don't, not that I didn't believe I was always kind of confused on just uh, religion and like I never said I didn't believe in God but I also it was like an internal war I always say like I felt like I had um but they were like amazing and didn't you know judge me for that and I'd go to church with them when I'd be visiting up there um and it was always I was always so anxious to go um Mm. and I would cry like every single time but (laughs) like silently to myself, but I knew looking back, you know, God was working on my heart. Um, and it turned into just me accepting, you know, Christ as my savior. And I could, I felt like his pastor was like speaking directly to me every time I was there. Mm -hmm. So I knew, um, those were like good tears that he was just bringing me closer to him. But yeah, I think after that, then I just, I felt really convicted in things, you know, Mm -hmm. um, swearing or, using the Lord's name in vain, like just things that he really, I was more aware of then, mm-hmm. um, that I think my sister probably noticed that, you know, those changes too mm-hmm. and how, you know, I talked or just presented myself. Yeah. When she reached out and said about wanting to be baptized, I was, so, I still cry about it. It makes me so happy. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, that's so cool though that she said that because I think, <clears throat> I think for some people that have been Christians, quote unquote, their whole life, you know, they grew up in church and all that, that that's a great story to have. Like they, they have that ability to just have some of that knowledge and and life experience, but they don't have that ability to have that before and after picture like you have Mm -hmm. where your sister goes, I knew you before. Now you're different. Yeah. 
And that's a story I think we see in the scripture a lot mm-hmm. is like, it's just different life. I mean, people in scripture are, have different names because they're so different. Yeah. Like they're like, you go from Saul to Paul. And so f- to hear that in your life and your sister actually call you out mm-hmm. on it. And then you just simply go, yeah, I have Jesus. Yeah. Um, I still remember that because I remember her coming up out of the water just crying. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's so cool. And we've talked about, I mean, even on this podcast, we talk about community and I know she needs that community and there's been some struggle of like her finding a church to fit in and all of those things, but your heart for her. And I think what you said of like, it was, it was you responding to something she saw. It wasn't like you having to have all the right answers. Right. It wasn't you preparing this speech to present to her all of the reasons to become a Christian. It was her response to your lifestyle. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I mean, that's great. I think, I think that's what we're all called to do, mm-hmm. you know, and we probably fall short of it, but that's, that's just really neat to hear that, that part of your story. Yeah. So what, um, what about like, so we talked about your, your growth in yourself. What about your growth in your family as far as like, you know, you guys were an engaged couple. How, how have you guys uh, become a stronger couple? How have you grown in your marriage through different things? So have small groups helped with that? Church, all of that. Yeah, I definitely think um, we've grown much like stronger at, I mean, I can't say like where we'd be if we weren't in church, but I can't mm-hmm. imagine it would be better. So mm-hmm. I definitely think us um, being rooted here at NCC and just in our faith, um, it's made our marriage stronger. It's helped with, you know, navigating the ups and downs of life and small groups, being able to to lean into others and, mm-hmm. you know, have that support system from, from other mentors or mm-hmm. friends is just amazing. Yeah. yeah. There's different scriptures that talk about, us being the the different parts of the body and how the yeah. different parts have different roles. And, and I think that's the beauty of the church. Um, God is not calling you Haley to be, I don't know, singing on stage. Maybe he is. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. Uh, maybe <laughs> that's wish. something that's been like tugging at your heart. And I just gave you permission to I say like no to I like to think that. I'm good at singing. <laughs> um, he has definitely not called me to sing on stage, like <laughs> for sure. Um, and e- even as I think of young parents, it's a season of life that does take a lot of intentional time to raise your children. Yeah. And so I think there's some ministries that it's like, okay, he's probably not calling you to get up early and to be here to make coffee mm-hmm. in the lobby, right? Like there's some people that do that. And that's a certain body part in the church. Right. Um, and, and so to... Maybe we're coming back to this whole give ourselves grace thing again to find your place in the church and to be okay with that and mm-hmm. be like, this is just where God has me for right now. And that might change mm-hmm. in five years. It may be different. It might be much more of a mentorship role now that you've come through certain things and God's brought you and you have your unique story. And maybe this podcast is part of that. Mm-hmm. And that's part of why I'm asking, why, why I asked you and asking others to share their stories. Um, because my story is different than your story. Right. And the person listening might, you know, have something that you've said that's just like, oh yeah, that makes sense. That that parallels my story a little bit, and you can encourage them through through your words. Mm-hmm, absolutely. So, anything else for our listeners? Any any words of encouragement or anything like that you'd like to to share? I would say just um, I know it can be intimidating, especially if you're new to your faith, or you know maybe you're you know shy or quiet, but just to really step out and get involved and, mm. um, small groups that really like that all changed everything for me. And then that helped me to want to serve in different ministries. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, just reach out because it's not, you know, it's scary in the moment, but then like we're all here to just mm-hmm. help one another and support and love one another. And, uh, like you said, we're all working together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you mentioned at the beginning, just you came by yourself a lot. Mm-hmm. So to be courageous, like you said, and to step out and do that. Yeah. So one thing I'd like to ask is a last question. What is one kind thing that someone did for you that you'll never forget? 
just when we had weight, I had like never heard of meal trains before mm. and seeing the support of like our small group at the time. Um, and since then, um, just that, just the church coming together and friends to like help you, even if it was just with a meal, um, and that support and that. And then Mabel, we had a crazy, you know, birth story with her and NICU time and just seeing people stepping up to watch the kids. So we could, you know, get down there and be mm -hmm. with her and just, yeah. it was really humbling and mm -hmm. just, I, don't know, I always remember those moments. Like it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Being supported with, with your family and that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's our reminder to be intentionally kind to one another. And we also just thank you for listening to another episode and for Haley being here so yes, that we could uh, interview her a little bit. Yes. All right. Thanks again for listening. We hope you have a great week. Thank you for tuning in to NCC Unplugged. If you've enjoyed listening to our podcast, we encourage you to share this with your friends and family. NCC Unplugged is available on all major podcast platforms. And if you're ever interested in experiencing Norwin Christian Church firsthand, we invite you to join us for our services every Sunday at 8.45 and 10.30 a.m. We have engaging classes available for all ages, ensuring there's something meaningful for everyone in our church community. For more information about NCC or any other inquiries, visit norwinchristianchurch.com 